Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about another classic circuit you should know. And that is the voltage follower. And we build it using an op amp. So we have our inverting input and our non-inverting input. And we have our output. And we're going to take advantage of two of the most important features of the op amp. Number one, the op amp will do whatever is necessary to make the output. It will drive the output whatever is necessary to make these two equal. So we'll say number one is equalize inputs. And number two, the op amp has a high impedance input and a low impedance output. And we'll get to why that's important in a minute. But let's, uh, let's do our voltage follower. So all we need is we're going to drive our input to the non-inverting input of the op amp and let's say we're going to give it 3 volts DC okay now we also have our power supply for the op amp and we'll just say we're going to drive it with plus 10 volts and minus 10 volts so to connect and make our voltage follower all we do is we take the output and we run it back to the inverting input with no resistors capacitors or anything so what this does is this takes advantage of the equalizing the inputs so if we're putting in 3 volts DC here what does the op amp have to do? What does, how does it have to drive the output to make these equal? Well, there's no voltage drop here, so it is going to have to drive the output to the input. And we end up with 3 volts DC on our output. And then, if it swings, say it goes to down to 2 volts, well then our output is going to be 2 volts. Are you with me so far? Good. Now let's take a look at where this is useful and why we like the high Z input and the low Z output. Okay, so let's take advantage of that uh, high input impedance, low output impedance. And let's say that we have our voltage source of 12 volts and we're using it to feed a Zener diode of 5 volts and what we really need is 2.5 volts so what we do we just create a simple voltage divider using equal value resistors say in this case we'll go uh, 10k and now we know our output is 2.5 volts but let's say over here our load uh oh I'm gonna do something with the battery hang on all right let's say our load over here whatever it might be needs 50 milliamps well where does the current that's going to power this come from well it comes from our 12 volt source through this resistor and over here so when we put that current through the resistor the resistor is going to get a little bit hotter and it is going to not put out exactly 2.5 volts because its value is going to change slightly 
So, what we can do is we can bring in our voltage follower circuit. and come over here and power our load with that and what happens now is we have a very high impedance here almost no current can flow into that op amp I mean you're, we're talking maybe pico amps it's negligible so if no current is flowing here then very little current is flowing here yeah, it, it's about the same it's almost equal we will just simply call it zero current flow up to this point of the circuit. That's our high impedance input. But we have a low impedance output. That means it can supply, it can source a very high current. So over here, we get our 50 milliamp of current flow no problem we have effectively isolated this part of the circuit from this part of the circuit with our voltage follower which is also known as a buffer all right so we've got our circuit drawn up here in multi-sim and if you take a look we have our power section here there's our zener, there's our source, there's our voltage divider. Then we have our voltage follower here, and then we have a lamp over here. So if we put some voltage and current on here, oh, let's move that one over here. We want to see there's our output. Here's our input, and there's the output there. So, if we run our simulator, you can see we have 87 nanoamps going into the op amp, and 1.04 amps coming out. Now, yeah, you see the voltage here has dropped lower. Well, that's just because of the load of the light here. Let me do this, that, get rid of that line, and we'll put this here, and we'll run the sim again, and there you see our input matches our output. Then we'll put our load on it again. run the simulation oh, it doesn't like that point all right let's move that <coughs> uh, this if I let me move that huh okay how about if I move it here there we go move that there move that one there let's try it again There we go. So, the point of this entire thing, the voltage follower, is we have taken our circuit and split it into our high Z which is low current And this side is low Z, low impedance, high current. We've created that buffer between this side and this side. And that is the beauty of the voltage follower. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it showed you something. If it did, please give me a thumbs up. 
feel free to comment, share, and please don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at 100,000. That's it. I'm out. Peace.